happy Monday, guys. Thanks for tuning in. As always, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Starship and how I think it will shape the future of the space industry, as well as Rocket Lab's place in that space industry, and why I think they will be able to survive and thrive in a world dominated, or at least in a world where Starship is operating. Uh, obviously, a lot of us have probably watched the recent test launch of the Starship, and it's been top of mind for many people and it, I'm not gonna lie it's an extremely impressive vehicle as a fan of the space industry in general and just you know wanting to live in that sci-fi future uh, it's pretty exciting you know I uh, yes it did blow up I know some people are gonna call that a failure but honestly every single launch they get further along and they could have made it to orbit this time so we might even see them starting to deliver payloads to orbit relatively soon However, um, while this is looking to be a extremely exciting, capable vehicle that's going to bring down cost of launch significantly in terms of mass to orbit, uh, I've been thinking a lot lately about how this will affect Rocket Lab and the future of Rocket Lab and making sure this doesn't, you know, break my thesis or plan for Rocket Lab to grow their own market cap as an investment. And I think I feel pretty good about the investment the investment in Rocket Lab and in some cases this might even help them as opposed to hurt them. That's an interesting angle that I don't think enough people think about. Uh, before we dive into that, please do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm trying to keep growing the channel, very much appreciated, and that like also helps as well if you're already a subscriber. Oh, and I did also need to give a shout out to the most recent channel member who joined. Thank you, Enlan Soon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, thanks so much for deciding to support the channel and helping me continue to do what I do, as well as all the current channel members who support on a monthly basis. Very much appreciated. All you guys, thanks so much. Okay, so um, Tim, by the way, on Twitter, uh, wrote another very good tweet chain about this topic. I guess great minds think alike. There's probably a lot of us out there thinking about this right now with the recent launch. So I think I'll link that in the description below as well if you want to check out his thoughts, and uh, I did find them quite interesting. Starting with Neutron and why Starship will not kill Neutron and both vehicles can be successful and operate at the same time. Uh, first of all, right now, all non-Starlink payloads are averaging around 8,000 kilograms in terms of mass. Uh, Starship, as we know, looking at 150 tons, so that would be a massive ride share. And you get into a similar problem that the Falcon 9 has with those small 300-ish kilogram or smaller payloads that you can't get them all to the perfect location. It's almost like Neutron is to Starship what Electron is to the Falcon 9 in a funny way except the payloads are just getting uh, so much higher in number we're having swarms of satellites being delivered in terms of these heavy mass payloads versus the one-offs where you have a certain satellite that needs to go to a certain location uh, the other thing I've been thinking about lately, and I think Tim mentioned this as well, very good point. Elon is a very aspirational thinker, and he will tell you what he thinks Starship could ultimately launch for down the line. We've seen some wild, exciting numbers like $1 million per launch in marginal cost. And while that, you know, might or might not be true down the line, I think there probably will be some Elon time going on here, like always, where things take longer than expected. People are comparing that to the current Neutron specs, which have been provided, and I think that's not a good way to think about it, because Neutron will be block one. We know it's going to be upgraded several times in the future. Peter Beck is more of a sandbagger and just quietly goes about his work, doesn't make any big pronouncements until, you know, they're working on something or have accomplished it. So don't be shocked for Neutron to significantly improve. They have the capacity with the engines, having those you know, operating well below margin on the current version of Neutron. Uh, seems like it should be not that difficult to scale up. And, you know, they, Beck even said themselves there will inevitably be block upgrades. 
Uh, the other thing to think about is Neutron having a similar margin profile to Electron really only needs about 20 to 30 launches to be successful. Now, I'm not sa saying that they won't or can't go beyond that, but to be a profitable little business for Rocket Lab and drive a big increase in their market cap, you really only need maybe 20 to 30 launches, as I said, per year, maybe less even, given the numbers are so much bigger. So... When you think about how the launch market will shape up, we've already talked about those dedicated launches to different difficult orbits that maybe doesn't make sense for a starship. The other thing is national security launches. Uh, many of them will flatly refuse to go on any kind of a ride share because they have security concerns, so they want dedicated launches as well. And the government is extremely keen to foster competition and build a competitive marketplace that is not solely reliant on Elon Musk. Uh, you know, he, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I won't even go into him and some of his ideas. But anyway, uh, yeah, they don't want to be reliant on only one company. They want a competitive marketplace, which means they're going to continue giving contracts to different companies even if they think they could get a launch for cheaper from someone else. Kind of like how, you know, governments keep throwing contracts to the likes of uh, ABL or someone else when Rocket Lab can already do it. Uh, yeah, they will continue throwing contracts at newer entrants and other companies to try and foster innovation and ensure that there is not a monopoly. Uh, the other thing to think about is, you know, competition is good. Having Starship in the market will, I think, push Rocket Lab and Neutron to innovate further uh, and improve quicker, which is really good for space fans as a whole. I mean, just look at NSSL Lane 1, right? This is the first time the government has brought that in, where previously they would only allow a couple big companies. Uh, they're opening it up for lots of new guys. Uh, that really shows that they do intend to help out and you know give contracts to the newcomers where they can so yeah monopoly will not be allowed to happen whether the government has to give out contracts to other companies or you know it it can't happen and even if it did happen it would be bad for spacex themselves because they would no longer be pushed to innovate as quickly with a starship that no longer has any competition and then the other thing to think about is Rocket Lab will very shortly be bringing their own payloads to Neutron, meaning the number of customers they really need to make it a viable product would drop even further. If you just look at SpaceX launching their Starlink on their Falcon 9 vehicle, very quickly the majority of the launches became Starlink, not customers, and there's still a lot of value being provided there, being driven. Uh, they get the downstream revenue from the services, which is something similar to Rocket Lab will do, and they'll obviously be able to design their satellites to work well with the Neutron launch vehicle and have the trade-offs controlling both sides of the equation really helps out there. So I do think between bringing their own payloads, getting some government contracts, and let's not forget getting jobs from competitors who will not want to fly on a SpaceX rocket if they're competing with SpaceX, as long as there's any other alternative, thinking of Amazon, thinking of any other person who may want to compete in space-based internet or, you know, any other areas that SpaceX want to go into. It's just awkward to give money to your competitor and most people won't want to do it. So that will remain a significant portion of the market going forward. Now, so that is why I do think Neutron can survive, will survive and thrive and be profitable for Rocket Lab, help drive a much larger market cap. In terms of the case for Starship actually helping Rocket Lab. Now, this is very interesting. Everyone's scared of Starship, and they're not really thinking of some of the implications where it could drive massive growth for Rocket Lab as well. If it really does drive down the cost to orbit massively and just enable really insane amounts of mass being delivered to orbit compared to today. Like if you look at a chart, the numbers Elon is projecting, it would look like a cliff. It would look like low, 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 straight up a cliff in terms of total mass to orbit in a very short period of time. This will enable all sorts of applications and companies would not be viable currently. And if you think about the implications of that from Rocket Lab, 
in their own space systems division. Well, space systems, their goal is to have a rocket lab component or part on every single piece of equipment that goes into space, whether they're building the whole satellite themselves, just the solar, reaction wheels, star trackers, all sorts of components, and they're expanding that very rapidly. I believe I did hear the figure in an interview or conference call, I don't remember exactly where, that they're up to around 30% of all satellites being launched, you know, I guess in the Western world, having a rocket lab component or logo in there somewhere. And even if they maintained that without growing, which they are growing their market share, but even if they just maintained that, if the market grows that exponentially and they maintain that market share, that's massive amounts of revenue for Rocket Lab just providing components for all these new companies and providers coming online. Some of the interesting use cases I've thought about for Starship in terms of new companies, what they could do is, well, space-based solar is an interesting one. Basically, you can capture direct sunlight in space. You're not worrying about atmosphere and all these other issues. And you beam the energy down to the Earth. There's different ways of going about this. The issue with that is you need insanely massive solar panels in orbit to really make it work. Now for Neutron, the volume of the fairing, the size of the vehicle, probably not large enough to make that practical. But Starship, on the other hand, maybe that can be practical. And in the future, we can see massive constellations collecting solar power in space, beaming that back down to Earth. And who has one of the largest current space-based solar manufacturers in the world? That's right, it's Rocket Lab with Solero. So the demand for solar cells on such an application would be astronomical. Obviously, they'd have to bring down the price a lot and scale a lot, whereas right now Solero is more like high efficiency, lower volume, bespoke uh, products. But I'm sure they will continue to evolve with the market and that would be a massive opportunity, massive demand. Another thing you can think about is that without Starlink, uh, Amazon's Project Kuiper would not exist. It's almost a exact answer to Starlink, a response, if you will. Starlink's growing, building the market. Amazon wants a piece. Um, who is building those reaction wheels for those Kuiper satellites? It sure as heck seems like it's going to be Rocket Lab with that mysterious 12 NMS uh customer they're gonna they say it's a mega constellation customer they're gonna start delivering this year they built out a whole new production line to support it so they can deliver high volume of reaction wheels we're talking a couple thousand a year that's big business for rocket lab it would not have existed if SpaceX wasn't doing their thing and pushing the space economy forward so that's another reason why every time SpaceX pushes other people are going to want to do the same thing, have the same ideas, and those people will come along and often hire Rocket Lab. Another application that could make a lot of sense with Starship perhaps is space-based manufacturing. Some of these zero-G environments make it a lot easier to build things like, especially in the pharmaceutical industry, for instance, you might be familiar with Varda, already launched a Varda capsule on a Rocket Lab Photon. And by the way, that did go on a Falcon 9. So it just goes to show, you know, Rocket Lab still gets business from companies that don't launch on Rocket Lab. So uh, Electron, while it's nice for, you know, small one-off missions or small constellations, uh, it doesn't really have the payload capacity to make sense for space-based manufacturing, where you probably need a lot of volume to bring up a lot of materials and work with them in that zero-G environment, then send them back down. Maybe a Starship makes more sense there. Rocket Lab, of course, already has some experience with that space-based manufacturing side of things, and these companies doing those pharmaceutical manufacturing, and we've also heard things like um, optics for fiber being easier to make in higher quality in orbit these companies will need someone to build out their space factories for them uh, that could be another massive area of demand where rocket lab could supply components build out entire satellites or you know who knows so um basically what that all comes down to is the massive growth that starship will allow should allow 
Rocket Lab's Space Systems Division to, you know, capture some of that growth on the manufacturing side, if not on the launch side, which let's be honest, the manufacturing side still delivers like three quarters of their revenue today. It is extremely important and one of the biggest growth opportunities for Rocket Lab today and in the future really should not be underestimated. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Am I wrong? Is Starship going to absolutely destroy Rocket Lab? Is SpaceX going to have a monopoly for the next hundred years where they're the only company launching? Um, what are their implications? Am I not thinking about? Please do share your thoughts down in the comments below. Always appreciate it and always do learn something new from you guys. If you haven't already subscribed, I hope you will consider doing that. And once again, just thanks so much for watching very much appreciated. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.